this Saturday to talk to you through a digital virtual university. This is the last and part five of a series that I started to explore and decode the national education policy for you. I believe you will mull over my suggestions and become part of a great renaissance that this great nation is going through. Teaching must include storytelling, discussion, teaching, training and focused research. Not since the times of Vishnu Sharma in Panchatantra, storytelling as a mode of teaching learning been used at any level. Guru Shishya tradition or face to face learning thrived in the ancient days where scholarship flourished. It still must be the most preferred way. However, Ekalavya after being rejected by Guru Dronacharya, began a disciplined program of self-study over many years and became an arsha of exceptional prowess, proving that education and impart of knowledge can take place in formal or informal settings. A job market, lukewarm at best, lack of quality faculty, poor networking, poor leadership, rising number of students, rising costs, inadequate curriculum interventions, infrastructural deficits, painfully low teacher-student ratios and a woefully low planning quotient, both in the public and the private education space. They all contributed to an alarming fall in quality levels in our education system. Whereas the current universities will need to transform into Velcro institutions in spirit, assemble, reassemble in different ways, they must be capable of being pulled apart and reassembled in new ways to respond to the challenges and opportunities. It is time for the digital, virtual and networked institutions start operating across the boundaries. As I have always said, meeting 50 GER as set in the national education policy is possibly only going digital and not by building more brick and mortar institutions. That the government in the recent budget announced that it is in the process of setting up a digital university that will cater to world class education is most welcome. This is an announcement that we must all celebrate in the above context. Hence looking beyond all limitations of face to face education, technology must be harnessed effectively to reach the unreached. What would be the contours of such a university, however, must be carefully drawn for it must be acknowledged that not everything can be done or should be done online. For those struggling with the cost of higher education, it's easy to see that the internet based learning opportunities can come at a fraction of the price that we pay for face to face learning expanding the possibilities if one can build a model that provides personalized learning online be it for teaching or for competitive examinations or for value-added courses for working professionals the digital university could be a future game changer currently across the world virtual schools and virtual universities deliver full curricula online Many private, public, non-profit, for-profit institutions now offer distance education courses from the most basic instruction through to the highest levels of degrees and doctoral programs. Levels of accreditation may vary. Widely respected universities such as Stanford and Harvard also deliver online courses. The pedagogies must be innovated accordingly. 
lifelong learning, virtual learning, blended learning, hybrid learning are all needed today. Content is the heart of any mode of delivery, synchronous or asynchronous. Friends, let's see Ailey's virtual digital university in this video. It's just amazing. The government's effort of developing Swayam platform can certainly bridge a part of the gap. Content in different languages and ICT formats will also enable delivery to most of the students across the country. Active effort must also be made to collate the best content of the private players. Expanding from 12 to 400 TV channels, one class, one TV channel program of the Prime Minister E. Vidya could also address some delivery side problems. Online teaching platforms where lessons are conducted via video chat and a virtual whiteboard with file sharing functions by various teachers, experts could be the future that we want to see. A central digital university with its centers in every district built on a hub and spoke model may be a way forward. Everyone's concerns in the country must be addressed. However, building the digital infrastructure, virtualization of services, integration of various software and applications will be imperative for the success of such a university. One of the major ills of current delivery models is the regimentation of and the structure it seeks in its implementation. With a surfeit of information available in the public domain and children addicted to social networking sites, it's very imperative to wean them away and allow them to learn at their pace and understand at their leisure. Visual mediums are at least 30% more effective than any other. YouTube is the most popular social network site. Almost every major social network sites like the Facebook, the Twitter, Google+, Instagram, LinkedIn and many more have all made it easier to upload, view, share videos on their respective applications and websites. Teaching learning methodologies on the digital university must evolve and not stagnate with time. Teaching methods would have to change with new teaching concepts like for example the flipped classrooms and new teaching infrastructures for example equipment for virtual worlds and so, and, and so on. We must turn the paradigm upside down do what we were doing in the classroom outside, do what we were doing outside in the classroom and so on. 
Even digital rights management would be extremely important for a digital university. Teachers will have to transform from being teachers to guides and mentors. New learning infrastructure, for example, increased computing capacities, AR, VR devices, all will be needed. Virtual and next generation labs like the code labs, pop-up studios, cloud innovation labs, gaming garages, AR, VR studios, makerspace, innovation, venture development centers, artificial intelligence and robo parks, they will all be needed. Finally, the teaching learning methods will need to be student centric and personalized. Adi Shankara, teaching learning methods were completely student centric. Be it Shramana Vidhi or Manana Vidhi or Nidhi Dhyasa Vidhi or Prashnottara Vidhi or Tarka Vidhi or Vyakya Vidhi or Adhyaropa Apavada Vidhi or Drishtanta Vidhi or Katakatana Vidhi or Upadesha Vidhi. Each method is a revelation. Unfortunately, except for Shravana Vidhi and Upadesha Vidhi, neither our schools nor our teachers want them today or they use today. These pedagogies will be highly useful even in the virtual and digital universities as well. Some online content providers are actually experimenting by building these pedagogies into their online content. Delivery even as some media organizations and ed tech companies are addressing these pragmatic modes of instruction into the delivery, into the delivery systems of a process. Affordability and access are also equally important. They are also being built into by the private players. They can cater to a social and egalitarian ethos being associated with cultural pedagogies, alternative curricula, community education and independent learning. The digital university must allow time for individual exploration through discussions with others and reading works that broaden the mind and build skills that are useful for a decent living. The digital university can also act as a pressure point on our traditional universities to perform better, to deliver better or close down. In a world where machines communicate with each other and where manufacturers create cyber physical production systems, CPPS as we call, and industries integrating the real world into a virtual world and enabling machines to collect live data, analyze them and even make decisions based upon them, can we afford either our universities or our children to be left behind? A digital university appropriately enabled may do our job, may be the answer. Friends, I have tried to not only decode the national education policy for you, I have also suggested several ways of realizing the objective set out in the national education policy. There is an opportunity lost cost for everything in life. Let's not fritter away the opportunities that have come our way after three decades and let's make most of them. Let this nation become Atmanirbhar and truly great. Let it be the beacon that the world is looking for. That's all for this Saturday and as ever, I promise to be back the next Saturday for another interesting Saturday wisdom episode. Until then, thank you, Dhaniwad and Namaskar.